Well, so here's how my scroll looks right now. And how's your scroll coming along? Have you started adding some fish yet? Or are you still thinking about what you might like to do? I'd like to show you a couple of different options if you don't feel up to making a really long scroll. I've started working on this hexagon with a light colored background as an alternative. In my head, I'd like to eventually collect enough of these hexagons to make a big quilt, but so far this is the only finished one. So that's an option for you. My daughter's been making these little stuffed hearts and one of them just happened to be fish themed. So I just thought I'd show you that as another option. And before I get started embroidering any more fish, I've got a couple of problems that I'd like to work out. I've been working on this really colorful fabric that was made in Nigeria. And for some reason I started working on the back, but then I realized that I'd really like that made in Nigeria to be on the front. So I'm going to cut the cloth so I can turn around part of it. And, and perhaps you don't have a really long piece of cloth and you're having to sew shorter lengths together to make a scroll. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm gonna flip this piece around and then place it on there and sew those two pieces of cloth together so that one piece will have the writing on the front going the right way around. I, I think it might look interesting if I cut this piece off a little bit differently and I'm going to keep that other little bit there for something else later. And I like the way that this looks overlapped like this. It gives a different pattern and it doesn't look quite so tossed together. And I'm going to use running stitch, just basic in-out, in-out stitches to attach these two pieces together just roughly right now because I'll be I'll be adding more stitches on top here. I'm actually going to be doing some embroidery on top of these stitches which will hold the pieces in place much more securely. I, I mentioned this before, one of the ways that you can attach your pieces of cloth together if you don't want to, them to be wobbling about while you're fumbling about making fancy stitches is to just do a simple running stitch. It's called a basting stitch and I'm using dark colored thread so it's not going to show up and I can take it out when I finish if I want or I can just leave it in there. And now those two pieces of cloth are attached together and they're not going anywhere. But there's one other thing that I want to deal with before I go too much further. I've noticed that this particular cloth, the top edge has been fraying quite a bit and I've got lots of loose threads that kind of get in the way. So I want to stabilize that top edge and I'm going to use something called a blanket stitch. The way that it works is you bring up your needle at the top edge of your cloth and then you're going to insert your needle back into your fabric in a diagonal position so it's over and down a little bit and then bring it up directly above where you inserted it. Go through the loop so you've got that loop secured. Do that again. So you always move over and you insert your needle into the cloth diagonally down and across from where you came up and then you come up immediately above that spot. And then when you're done, you just take a little one of those little securing stitches at the edge. So here I'm going to do the exact same stitch just right on the edge of the cloth and it'll just stabilize my top edge. So if you've got a lot of fraying threads on your cloth, this is a good way to secure it. You can also use this to attach some of your fish. Some of the big beige fish that I attached when I got started were attached using this stitch. And I've noticed that for me being a left-hander, sewing from left to right is a little bit awkward. So I'm going to do a little bit here and then I'm going to switch and start at the other end of the piece of cloth and sew in the other direction, which is a little bit more comfortable for me. But you can start at whatever end you want and go in whichever direction you want. So while I'm stitching here, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about fish as symbols. It was one of the things that I've been thinking about. What do fish mean to me? I looked up the symbolic meaning of fish and here are some of the things that, that I found that fish are symbols of rebirth, fertility, the unconscious or higher self, luck, change, health, and feelings. 
and I've got I've got a rather personal perspective on what fish means. They for some reason a few years ago, fish redfish specifically were showing up in my weaving quite unexpectedly. And maybe I'll do I'll do a video just on my public YouTube channel about what those fish symbols mean to me. Maybe you have some thoughts about what fish mean to you as you're stitching here, either your personal memories or, you know, you don't necessarily have to get all deep and spiritual. Maybe it's just a fun thing to do. You just like the shape of them. It doesn't matter. Now, once once I finish that, we'll start our actual embroidery. Today, we're just going to stitch right onto our background fabric and create these little schools of tiny little fish. And this first group here, these are actually some experimental stitches that I was trying out. It's kind of a variation on a chain stitch, a detached chain stitch, but instead of the beginning and ending of the stitch being coming out of the same hole, I'm crisscrossing the threads so that they kind of form a loop that looks a bit like a fish's tail there. So if you can see that stitch, that's the stitch I'm going to use. I'll do another one in the opposite direction. So this time, instead of starting at the tail end, I'm starting with that little tiny stitch that secures the loop in place. And then I'm creating this stitch backwards. And I'll show you why I'm doing it in both directions when I start working on my school. But for right now, they both look this, essentially the same once you're finished, but they're just created in opposite directions. Now this this particular stitch is not very stable so I decided that it it stays in place better if I put in another securing stitch between the loop and the crisscross bit at the bottom and that can be either in the same color or a different color. It just adds another layer of variation to your stitches and this is that's the way that I I did it for my school of fish. I added a different color. So here I am. I'm starting my stitches. I'm working in that area where I've cut the fabric and I've, I'm overlapping it. And these stitches are going to be decorative, but they're also going to help to hold the cloth together in this area. And I just started at one end and I'm working my stitch just the way I showed you in the first way, starting at the bottom, working and making my loop and then securing that loop. And I'm sort of working along in one direction. And then what I decided is that I want to start going back in the other direction. So instead of cutting my thread here and going back, I'm actually going to make this stitch in the opposite direction. So this is a really comfortable way for me to go back and forth without having to stop and start my thread all the time. But I make a little stitch that I'm going to loop through and then crisscross and there you go. So I'm going to make a large school of fish and I'm just going back and forth in this area here in the dark part of this area so that my my bright pink fish show up well. I don't know that they would show up so well on the orange. So there was another one of those loose threads. And there you can see right there, my thread was a little bit twisted there. And, and that's one of the things that happens with the stitch if you don't, if you don't secure it now with an extra stitch. And in this spot here, I'm creating just a half fish. I'm using just a, a fly stitch there to create just the front nose of the fish. So it looks like that fish is coming out from be behind that orange section there. So you can you can make up all kinds of stitches that you like. You can think about what other stitches do you think could make a fish-like shape. So now I've got loads of fish here and I'm gonna go back in a thread with a slightly different color, a lighter color to stabilize all those stitches so that they're not likely to start flipping around. And I just will make my way from one one stitch to the next one. And I really don't worry about long floats in the back. I just make sure I don't pull my threads too tightly and I don't leave any big loose floats in the back. And I just pick the next one, whichever one seems convenient or closest to get to and just go back and forth. And then once I've finished all of these, I'll have a nice imaginative, I don't know if there's any fish that are actually these colors, but they will read as a school of fish, a group of small fish going, going along my cloth. 
none of these fish are perfect. They are all kind of wonky and wobbly. And the thing is, it doesn't matter. When you look at them as a group, you don't notice that they, that any one of those stitches are is imperfect. It all looks good. They're a little bit like groups of human beings. None of us are perfect, but once we all get together and form a community, it doesn't really matter. We, we can make up for each other's weaknesses and strengths. So I encourage you to leave your stitches, whether they look perfect or imperfect, and just keep going and don't worry. And now I'd like to show you another option for creating a little small embroidered fish in a slightly different way. And this time each fish is going to be made up of three fly stitches that are all interconnected with each other. So the first fly stitch that I'm making here is the right side of the fish. And that little securing tab, I think, can look a little fin-like, especially if you do it at an angle. And now I'm going to make another fly stitch that's the mirror image of that first one on the other side. And that'll form the other side of my fish's body. And the stitch that I take to secure that piece will be the other fin. And now I'll do one more fly stitch at the tail end off my fish, whichever end I decide is the tail. I guess you decide depending on which angle the, the fins are pointing in. And I'll secure this one by going through that bottom part of the body there. So th three fly stitches to make one little fish. This school of fish will be slightly bigger than the other school because it's a little bit more time consuming to make these fish. So I'm gonna make them slightly bigger because if I was going to make them tiny, I might as well do them the other way. So I'm using this beige thread to make one, one fly stitch. And then I'm repositioning my needle to make the other fly stitch. Did you notice that little thing that I'm holding in my hand there? Well, let me show you again. You didn't get to see it very well that time. That is a thimble that my daughter made for me and I'm trying it out. It's meant to be worn there and it's meant to be used when you need to push your needle through some really tough cloth. And I'm just seeing how it feels to have it in my hand. And I must say, it's quite comfortable. And I think she said that she watched a YouTube video to learn how to make that. And I think it's called a sashiko thimble. So you could possibly look that up and see if you can find a video if you would like a fancy thimble like that one. Same daughter who made the, the puffy hearts. She's the one who made this, this thimble for me as a Christmas present. So I just continue on till I run out of thread. That's how I decide how, how big my school of fish is. And I head off in one direction and then go back in another direction if I, if I want to make more. So I've got a few there. I'm going to keep going. And as you can see, I've got a lot more off my, my little school of fish. This is another group of fish. They're not identical. They're all similar shape and size because I, I don't have a template that I'm following to make them exact. So they're all slightly different, but you know that they kind of belong together as a group. So now that I finished making my school, instead of leaving them hollow, which I could do, I could leave them as they are. I'm going to fill in their bodies with a chain stitch to again, modify the color a little bit. So you come out on top of your cloth and then you go back into the same space, bring your needle up into that loop there and then make a securing stitch. So I, I apologize for the blurriness here, but basically I'm just making a, a chain stitch inside the body of each of my, my little fish here in a slightly different color, just to add a little bit more texture and variety. I'm just going through and adding, adding that inside all of the bodies. And it's not perfect. It, you know, you can still see bits off the dark cloth through, but that's okay. I'm calling that texture and variety. And that's just way, the way my fish are going to be. Yeah, just tell yourself whatever you need to be okay with it. And that is 
pretty much it for today. You can make as many of these little schools of fish as you like, and maybe you can think of some other stitches. I'd, I'd love to know if you want to make any comments down in the comments there, if you can think of other ways to make little schools of embroidered fish like this. In my next video, we will start to embellish the bodies off our large fish that we created in the previous video. So we'll, I'll see you again soon, and that's it.